Hi everyone, so I'm Millie, this is what my skin used to look like, so obviously this is a really big improvement. So I have done this naturally and I'm just going to tell you all about my experience with my skin, the whole journey basically, things I've tried, things that's not worked and where I am now. I've also got a bit of a cold so forgive me if my voice sounds a bit bizarre. I've had acne for about 8 years now, I'm 18. Um, so I've had it since I was about 10 years old and it's always presented when I was younger all over my face. Um, when I was about 10, 11, 12, it presented more so on my forehead, on my cheeks, on my chin and like the lower halves of my face were pretty much acne free. And then as I got older, it was more the lower halves of my face, my chin, and not so much my forehead, so more hormonal. When I was about 12 years old, I first went to the dermatologist, or my GP, um, and they prescribed me benzoyl peroxide, acne side, epiduo, that kind of thing. And to be honest, all it did was bleach my sheets and make my skin dry, and yeah, it didn't work for me. So I continually went back to the dermatologist and then they put me on something called limacycline. Now limacycline is an antibiotic that you take and that's meant to help your skin. So I went on limacycline. I was never told any period of time I was meant to be on limacycline for or anything really about this antibiotic that I was taking. So I took it for about 10 months, which is a really long time to be on an antibiotic without any checkups. It worked pretty well. Um, I've never been that responsive to treatment as in my skin never fully clears up and then it stopped working for me. At this point I'd heard of two antibiotics, limacycline and doxycycline. So I went back and I asked for doxycycline because my friend was on doxycycline and I thought well limacycline hasn't worked for me, let's try doxycycline. So I went on doxycycline and everything went absolutely mental and this is when it all really started to go downhill. It was getting really cystic, really angry. I remember it all around like the sides of my faces huge inflamed red like i remember literally sides of my face they were purple like they were so angry so that really didn't work for me so i went back to the doctors and they said okay let's try contraceptive pills now bear in mind at this point i was maximum 13 years old and i was being put on a contraceptive pill which i didn't need for contraceptive use, I didn't need it for anything like that, I was just being told this will clear your skin and I was absolutely desperate. So I went on the contraceptive pill, I believe I was put on Revedigon to start off with, which is a combined pill, so it has synthetic estrogen as well as progesterone. I went on about seven different contraceptive pills and then went back to the dermatologist and said none of these have been working for me. I tried each one for about four months at a time because it takes three months for them to like kind of kick into your system and then I could kind of get a gauge if it's going to make it worse or better. None of them made any difference, they just kind of made it worse because I was just kind of messing up my endocrine system. So I went back and I was like, my mum has suffered with really bad acne and she went on the combined pill called Dinette, which is an anti-androgen. So it suppresses your testosterone levels and your testosterone is what makes your skin oily. Oiliness is what makes you break out. Obviously I didn't know that then, I just know that now, uh, which is why Dianette probably worked for my mum. So I got put on Dianette and it made everything worse, like it just everything was out of whack, nothing was working. I went back to the dermatologist and I went on Accutane. I went on Accutane in 2019. I went on it for a six month course and my skin wasn't clear by the end. So my experience with Accutane in this first round that I did was pretty brutal to be honest. So I experienced severe eczema, it was everywhere and it wasn't even just like the eczema patches, like it was that itchy, there was just blood and scabs and everything everywhere. I had awful dryness with my eyes, I had nosebleeds all the time. I remember it was my last dermatologist appointment and I said to them, I was like, my skin's not clear, like, are you seriously going to take me off this medication? They're like, yep, you've completed the course. And throughout my course, I would always write down the milligrams I was on. And I've actually worked out I wasn't ever brought up to a cumulative dose. And a cumulative dose is the amount of milligrams you need compared to your weight in order to kind of have enough in your system to turn off your oil glands. So it will actually make a big difference in the long term. And I was never brought up to a cumulative dose. That was never ever mentioned to me at all. I came off it. And 
my skin was a lot better than it had been. Um, it was mostly clear, but in terms of the breakouts I was having, they were big and they were cystic. As I've said, I was on a pill for Accutane. The whole reason that you're on a contraceptive pill is because of the risk of child deformities if you were to have a baby. At this point in my life, I was really, really young and I didn't actually understand the implications of coming off the hormonal contraceptive pill on my skin. Six months after I finished Accutane, I came off my pill. I was like, okay, my skin's basically clear. I still get these breakouts, but it's manageable. I don't really want to be on the pill. I never wanted to be on the pill in the first place. I didn't need it for contraceptive reasons. I was just put on it to heal my skin, which it didn't do. I was forced to be on it for Accutane. Accutane's done its job, sort of, and I don't need to be on it. I thought my skin then relapsed from Accutane. But what I'm actually realising at the moment, now I'm learning all about my hormones, is what happened was that was post pill acne, that was my hormones going, oh my god, help. At first, my response to my skin going crazy was, I'm going to try and do this myself. At this point, I was watching a YouTuber called Cassandra Bankston, and she posts a lot of YouTube videos on how she went vegan to help her acne. So I bought all these skincare products. And I was just so manically trying to heal my acne and nothing worked and I went vegan. And at this point in my life, I started a fitness page on my Instagram. I started posting workouts and things and because at this point we were in lockdown, because this was occurring in 2020, everyone was on their phones, everyone was trying to do at home workouts so my page actually, you know, took off. And all of the validation I was getting from the way my body looked just made me want to lose more and more weight. And this is where I just kind of got into a really unhealthy relationship with food. And my skin also started to decline, probably because I wasn't fueling it enough. My blood sugars were off, my hormones were off, everything was off. I went to the doctors and instead of getting help for all of these issues, I was given a Lima Slight Clinic and it improved my skin a little bit for about three weeks and then it stopped working. So I came off Lima Cyclin, went straight to the dermatologist and got offered Accutane Run 2. So, I talked to all the dermatologists about my cumulative doses. I knew exactly how I'd manage my symptoms. I did the six months and at the end my skin wasn't completely clear. It was a lot clearer than the time before. So I was happy with that. I was obviously on a contraceptive pill for that period of time. I don't know if I mentioned that I had to go back on the pill to be able to go on the Accutane. And that pill was called Microgynon. And I'm still on that pill now. But the only difference with this round was when I came off it, I was prescribed topical tretinoin. I got prescribed that as like maintenance. Then my skin started to decline again. My immune system was in absolute shambles. I was constantly at A&E with bowel issues and abdominal discomfort and worried about if there's anything on my ovaries. I'm still concerned that I have cysts on my ovaries but I won't, they just won't see me. I've been going to and from the doctors for seven years at this point. They're not listening to me, they never have listened to me in terms of what my body needs rather than just band-aiding it with these medications. So then I, then I decided, okay, well, I'm gonna try and do this myself. So I tried to keep my acne at more of a manageable level with food and with my tretinoin that I got prescribed and just trying to manage my stress, but I was in quite a toxic relationship as well, which meant I didn't really sleep very well. My anxiety was always high. My self-esteem was really low. I wasn't eating very well. I couldn't heal, like I wasn't in the mindset to heal. Then I went traveling. So I went traveling this January in 2023 and I've just come back May 5th. So on this trip, my skin would clear up and then get really, really angry. I knew it was the food because I'm on the pill. Uh, like my hormones aren't really changing because I'm on the pill. You know, I'm doing the same things. I'm getting the same amount of sleep. It's got to be my food. It would get really itchy, get really itchy, really bumpy. And I was thinking, this is like allerg like this is like an allergy. So it's probably food. I essentially, over the course of being traveling, I cut out processed foods, refined sugars, vegetable oils that were endocrine disruptors. So I didn't cut out coconut oil or avocado oil. I was mostly just eating whole foods, salads, um, salmon, goodness for me but it was a little bit harder to manage because of course I was traveling I'm not at home I can't cook it all myself I was on Spotify and I was trying to find a podcast to listen to that was about hormone health because I didn't actually know much like and there's not really much about women's menstrual health anywhere 
so I found Peace Love Hormones and Maddie Miles is the lady that does this podcast but honestly I've learned so much from her podcast as to what to eat, how to balance your hormones so I've really like surrounded myself with people that educate me a lot about women's menstrual health which is why I've now started advocating for it because I feel like I want a place within that society because I have no one. So now since I've been home I am now committed to healing my hormones healing my gut health and stress management and sleep and everything that goes into a really healthy lifestyle. So I've started working with a nutritionist because my ultimate goal is to come off the pill but come off it safely, come off it with supplements that's going to support my body. I don't think I said but whilst I was away I realised that the allergy bumps and everything that I was getting and the acne was actually coming a lot of the time from gluten or from lack of sleep. So when I eat gluten, I get hives on my face and these hives will turn into like kind of scars and they'll come up and they'll come down and they look like pimples. I don't know if you can see this red spot here. That That's a hive and I had that about two weeks ago and it will come up and it will come down but it's a hive because it's red around the outside and then it's skin coloured on the middle and it's itchy. And whenever I have panic attacks, I'll get hives all over my face. Last time I had them all around here, I'll get them on my knuckles, on my joints. Whilst I was away, obviously there was a lot of jet lag or there was flights in the middle of the night. And if I didn't get that sleep, I would have spots and bumps all over my face or literally up to just underneath my eyes. I know that my body is really, really sensitive and it's just about me personally managing my sensitivities and everyone's different. So my main goal is just to be able to come off the pill, get my natural cycle back, you know, do cycle syncing, cycle sync my workouts and everything like that. So the whole point of me having this YouTube is to be able to post longer videos and I also kind of want this as a kind of diary and like journal of like my experience and my progress through this journey and the highs and the lows. I'm going to leave my TikTok and my Instagram below and I would really, really appreciate the support. Um, but yeah, so... I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!